Welcome to the Church Universal Series, where we seek to tell the often untold story of the many groups, outreaches, and apostolates in the Catholic Church, which are making a positive difference in the world through their charitable works and prayerful lives. Hello, I'm Father Joseph Mary, and today I'm speaking with the leader of an organization that is the largest and oldest African-American Catholic lay organization in the United States. My guest today is the Supreme Knight of the Knights of Peter Claver. He's also the Deputy President of the International Alliance of Catholic Knights, De Carlos Blackman. Welcome, De Carlos. Thank you. Good to have you on the program. Tell us a little bit about the history and the work of the Knights of Peter Claver. The Knights of Peter Claver was founded in 1909 in Mobile, Alabama at a time when African Americans could not join the Knights of Columbus in the South. Mm -hmm. uh, since its founding, it has always been an order where everyone is welcome regardless of race or ethnicity. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And uh, yourself, how did you get involved? Like, how long have you been involved with the Knights of Peter Claver? Well, I joined the Knights of Peter Claver in late 2002 after prodding by the members of mm -hmm. the council in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, I had always resisted uh, for <laughs> quite some time, resisted, resisted, but they wore me down and, and I joined and shortly after that I became the Grand Knight of the council, went on to become uh, for our local conference in the Gulf Coast, the conference vice president, conference president, and shortly after that I became the Supreme Knight. So I had been a knight for about seven and a half years before mm -hmm. I'd become the Supreme Knight of the Order. Now we celebrate the Feast of St. Peter Claver in the Universal Church every year. Why was he chosen as your patron? St. Peter Claver was a champion of the African slaves. Uh, St. Peter Claver believed that everyone had dignity and we, choose, we chose uh, St. Peter Claver uh, as <coughs> one to emulate. Now you are also the Deputy President of the International Alliance of Catholic Knights. I wasn't aware that there were so many different groups of Catholic Knights. Yes, the International Alliance of Catholic Knights uh, is comprised of 15 of the world's uh, different fraternal uh, societies. Uh, it was started in 1979 by of course, the past Supreme Knight of the Knights of Columbus, uh, mm. Virgil Deccant, and other uh, Supreme Knights. There was about six of them at the time in Scotland. Okay. What would be some of those groups that belong to the International Alliance? You mentioned the Knights of Columbus, of course, the Knights of Peter Claver. Some of those uh, groups would be the Knights of Columbanus in Ireland, the Knights okay. of the Southern Cross in Australia, the Knights of Da Gama in South Africa, the Knights of Marshall, uh, the Knights of uh, St. Malumba in Nigeria. Wow, mm. so they're all over the world, different Knights groups. All over the world, <coughs> on all six, uh, on six uh, continents. What would be some of the similarities, do you think, between those groups as far as what they're trying to accomplish? Well, supporting the church, uh, supporting the hierarchy, supporting parochial communities and the mission to evangelize, uh, uh, to provide uh, support for one another, mm -hmm. uh, development of youth, um, social interaction. Beautiful. We had on EWTN this past July your 99th annual convention, right, in Mobile, yes. Alabama, where the Knights were founded, the Knights of Peter Claver were founded. Tell us what happens at that annual convention beside, besides what our viewers saw, uh, the Thanksgiving Mass. Well, the Knights of Peter Claver is an organization of the membership. So when the National Council, the supreme legislative body of the order, come together, that's where goals are set. Uh, the National Council Board of Directors, between conventions, uh, it is our responsibility <coughs> to implement the wishes of the order as I a see. whole. So at that annual convention, that's where direction is set. And that's where the elections would take place. That's where you learned that you were going to be the Supreme Knight, right? That is correct. In 2010. Uh, in 2010 <laughs> in uh, St. Louis. Great. Were you surprised by that uh, by Well, uh, it had, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, to put it bluntly, yes, I, I was surprised. Well, we have a video clip of that mass, so let's take a look at that now so our viewers can have mm -hmm. a little bit of a taste of that Thanksgiving mass at the annual convention. Okay.
Well, that was magnificent, mm -hmm. and we get a little bit of a taste. Our production crew did a nice job of editing it together mm -hmm. to give you a sense. I have to admit, though, you know, when I heard, uh, I watched the Mass on YouTube, it was on our EWTN YouTube page, mm -hmm. And when I heard that responsorial psalm, I said, that girl can sing. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to listen to it a second and a third time. And then last night, you told me that you were involved in writing the music for that psalm. Yes, uh, Lauren Warner, who was singing, uh, she's from the Archdiocese of uh, Los Angeles, actually a school teacher at Transfiguration mm -hmm. a School in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, she and I wrote that psalm for uh, this particular mm. liturgy. So. And then the oboe player, you mentioned that he's also related to you. So. Yeah, that's my Uncle Louis, uh, another brilliant uh, musician. So music is very, very important. Why is the liturgy important to you? You mentioned that to me last night, that music, like music should serve the liturgy, and that uh, the liturgy, you were, you really thought that that was important, that the liturgy be done well here. I think that when we come together as the people of God, everything we do should flow in and out of our corporate worship. That's very, mm -hmm. very important. So while there are a lot of things that we like to do in life, <clears throat> I think first and foremost, the centrality of the Eucharist is uh, preeminent. So mm -hmm. when we come together for liturgy and worship, we have to put the best that we have together for that and truly reflect the cultures of the people. And this was clearly the intention of the Mass in Mobile for that opening Mass to be mm -hmm. authentically black and Catholic. Mm -hmm. Authentically black, authentically Catholic. Mm -hmm. So we had the Ave Maria, we mm -hmm. had the liturgy done mm -hmm. well and beautifully, mm -hmm. and that's an important component. Absolutely. Right. Now we noticed also that the Knights of Peter Claver is not just adult men, right? It's, that is correct. It's something larger than just a men's group. Talk about that. That's right. The Knights of Peter Claver, the order is comprised of six divisions. We have the ladies division as well. And in addition to the Knights division, we have the ladies division. We have uh, the fourth degree knights, the fourth degree ladies, but very important, <coughs> we have the junior divisions, the junior daughters and the junior knights because the development of youth is very, very important uh, to the Knights of Peter Claver. It is most important that we augment whatever mm -hmm. is done in parish schools of religion, in Catholic schools as far as um, presenting the faith forming young people in all their dimensions as people of mm -hmm. God. So it's really the whole family is encompassed by the Knights of Peter Claver and there's ways that they can all get involved. I think you have conventions also for the young people, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, we'll have our next convention in Orlando, Florida mm -hmm. uh, for young people. It's very important that we provide young people the means for independence, uh, the means for success moving forward, but to be faithful citizens mm -hmm. and uh, just people of the Lord. Now you mentioned uh, Lauren who was singing the responsorial psalm and the mm -hmm. Alleluia, that she's a member of the Ladies Auxiliary. She is, she is, uh, mm -hmm. she is a tra uh, Transfiguration Court uh, 220 in mm -hmm. Los Angeles. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she has been involved for a number of years, although she looks very young. That she could be part of the junior ladies, <laughs> our junior, junior daughters. <laughs> that's right. right. That's right. <laughs> she, um, her father is uh, the deputy of the Western States. Mm -hmm. So the Knights of Peter Claver is very important in her family. Okay. So she was raised in the order as a junior uh, before, of course, becoming a lady. Now, someone who might be watching this program. Uh, why would you encourage them to become a member of the Knights of Peter Claver? What will enrich their own lives? What are ways that they're going to be able to help in the outreach um, that you're involved in? Well, I would encourage anyone who wants to learn more about their faith to help uh, the fellow man or woman uh, to become members of the order. It's about <coughs> serving the whole people of God. As I mentioned earlier, that it doesn't matter what ethnicity, what race you are. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe uh, that everyone, by virtue of our sacraments of initiation, we are all in this together. Mm -hmm. So uh, I believe strongly that everyone should come to become uh, a member of the Knights of Peter Claver to carry 
out the apostolic work, the Catholic action that the church asks of us. What would be some of the ways that the Knights of Peter Claver are doing that? What are some practical ways that you are implementing, I guess, helping the society, your communities, and um, be, uh, having a contribution to the betterment of others? Well, some of it has to do with um, health screenings and what have you, things that local communities need, support in local parishes, support in Catholic schools. Hmm. Uh, in fact, uh, St. Joseph Church in Huntsville has uh, the Knights of Peter Claver Council 286, mm -hmm. and they are very active in supporting Holy Family Regional School in mm -hmm. Huntsville. That's a school that serves the needs of everyone regardless of socioeconomic status. Mm. So much of it is uh, supporting our schools, uh, uh, health care uh, throughout the uh, country and pro promoting scholarship. So you're helping to raise funds for these different um, charitable works. That is correct. Mm -hmm. And that's benefiting uh, a number of people. Have you seen some some ways that a community has been enhanced or individuals' lives have been enhanced through the works, work of the Knights of Peter Claver, ways that you've... Um, I have, I, you know, I know personally being in Huntsville, Alabama, looking at the young people that have reaped the benefits of scholarships going uh, mm. to school, some who may not have had the means, uh, students at Holy Family School uh, mm. whose parents were not able to afford uh, that tuition to have uh, tuition augmented and what have you to provide that uh, basis. In Mississippi, there was an apartment uh, complex and what have you that uh, many years ago, the Knights of Peter Claver were instrumental in founding low-income housing for people. So mm. there have been some very concrete ways that uh, the Knights of Peter Claver has been able to help the community. Now, as a Supreme Knight, you told me that you're doing a good bit of traveling, too. You must be if you're going out to visit mm. Los Angeles, these other locations, to see what's going on mm -hmm. universally in the United mm -hmm. States for the Knights of Peter Claver. Talk about that. Well, I uh, try, uh, being the Supreme Knight of the Knights of Peter Claver is not a full-time job. <coughs> and uh, to be frank, you know, <laughs> I have far too many irons in the fire <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that I'm running out of irons. <laughs> so, But um, I think it's important to travel around to see what's happening in local communities. Uh, we are a wonderful organization, and I think it's also good for people to see the Supreme Knight. I didn't really realize how very important that was to the membership. I was recently in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles uh, for on vacation with my wife, Kenobia. We were celebrating our 12th wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. uh, and while I was there, I decided that I was going to go to a parish unannounced for Mass. Well, that wasn't the smartest thing to do, <laughs> I realized, because someone called, uh, a peri uh, one of the ladies called another lady and said, the Supreme Knight is here for Mass. So the woman comes at the end of Mass and she says, oh, well, you know, they called me and so I had to come here to see you, you know. <laughs> and of course, you know, for me, it would have been nice had she been at the liturgy, but uh, mm -hmm. that's besides the point. But it, it just showed me how very important it is for the leader mm -hmm. uh, to be present to the membership around the country. And you also write articles. Um, we'll see in the next program that the bishop who delivered the homily at this Mass, mm -hmm. he refers to a letter that you wrote in the summer. Would that be something in your publication? Is it something that's sent universally? Well, some of them are in the publication, our uh, semi-annual publication, The Claverite, which talks about issues uh, for members of the order. But some of those things have also been published, uh, with EWTN News um, okay. and, and National Catholic Register. You know, one of the employees here was a member of the Knights of Peter mm -hmm. Claver, Dennis Jackson, and mm -hmm. unfortunately, he had this unusual illness that eventually led to his death. Mm -hmm. And I attended his wake and his funeral, and I was really moved by the liturgy that took place at his wake, mm -hmm. that you had the Knights and the ladies of St. Peter Claver there in large numbers. Mm -hmm. And they were a prominent part of prayers that were prayed for the repose of his soul. Talk about the prayers that you have for your deceased members. You know, uh, prayer is central uh, to the order. You know, we are an authentically 
Catholic organization. Mm -hmm. So everything we do should naturally be focused on our belief in God and our, the reflection of the church's mission. So at um, the funeral, you saw the prayers, uh, mm -hmm. you heard the prayers and the membership praying, reflecting that we believe that life has changed not ended. Yes. You know, that's something that we believe that it's not over. Our brother is still with us. So that belief in the communion of saints, these authentically Catholic uh, issues, these uh, notions, this is who we are, this is what we mm -hmm. believe. So in everything we do, that has to be reflected. Beautiful. And you're even involved in that liturgy and some refinements that are going on in that liturgy for mm -hmm. the wake service. So that would be a typical thing that would happen mm -hmm. in all the communities where there are knights that is, and ladies. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Whenever a member dies, that ritual, it would be affected. Now, if someone wanted to learn more about the Knights of Peter Claver, what would be the best way for them to do that? I think the best way would be to simply go online to www.kofpc.org, mm -hmm. uh, the website, or to contact <clears throat> the executive director in the national office in New Orleans, uh, Louisiana. What are some of the resources that they might find on your website? Information about the Knights of Peter Claver, uh, the history of the Knights of Peter Claver, the national officers, uh, and there's more. We're in the process of revamping uh, the website to make it more user-friendly and mm -hmm. to have a wealth of more information. And that's really something I think, uh, especially young people, but a lot of people generally get their information now from the internet. I was looking there myself and I saw that they had photographs and mm -hmm the names of your seven founders. That's right. Um, can you talk just a little bit about the seven founders of the Knights of St. Peter Claver? The Knights of Peter Claver was uh, founded, of course, by uh, four Josephite priests and three laymen in Mobile, Alabama. And, of course, the goal was to provide that opportunity for men of color who would have been lost uh, from uh, the church to other outside uh, secretive organizations. Mm. So the goal was to provide something within the church to keep uh, our men uh, very active within the faith. What about the ladies auxiliary? What would be some of the works that they might be involved in? Many of the works of the ladies auxiliary are of course the works of the order as a whole. Mm -hmm. So right now, uh, very big is sickle cell uh, something that mm. really affects the African-American community. Yes. So the entire order is very much involved with that, and the ladies uh, are as well. You mentioned that as a Supreme Knight that you wanted to bring a new emphasis to the pro-life outreach. Could you talk about that, why that's important, and what sort of steps you're doing to bring about the pro-life uh, message to the African-American community? Well, the African American, make no mistake, the African American community is profoundly affected by the ills of abortion. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we're dealing with the degradation of the African American <coughs> family. So the issues of life uh, are not limited to just being anti abortion, but it's conception to natural death. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important that all of our people are very much aware of that. Very good. Well, we appreciate you being on this first episode uh, regarding the Knights of Peter Claver, and we look forward to the second episode where we'll talk further, and our viewers will have an opportunity to hear a little bit more of your own personal story growing up here in, here in Alabama. Okay. So thanks be for being a part of this to Carlos. All right. St. Paul writes that God gives a variety of gifts and inspires a variety of services for the common good. What gifts has he given to you? What service has he inspired in you? Perhaps you would like to be a part of the fraternity and outreach of the Knights of Peter Claver or the Ladies Auxiliary or Junior Divisions. May God bless and guide you. See you next time on The Church Universal. <laughs>